All right, I had promised in one of my videos that I would explain a little more about uh, stripping the undercoating off of chrome. Um, what I mean by that is uh, when you're stripping chrome parts, say like this little, let me grab a part here, say like this little valve cover. Say you wanted to strip that valve cover and uh, and I'll clad it or paint it black or whatever you want to do. Now what I always use typically is just good old liquid bleach. Uh, it's convenient. I like it. It's I can keep it in a bottle. I can throw my parts in it. it it'll strip chrome. No problem. Um, now it varies. I mean some stuff will strip in 10 minutes. Some stuff will take a day or two. It just depends on the manufacturer, the chrome, the, the, the era of the kit. I mean there's a lot of factors and I'm sure you can find you know there's other alternatives there's well there are plenty of alternatives out there there's um, oven cleaner and um, brake fluid and and some people say they, they use um, purple power and things like that but for me it's bleach and it does a great job um, but the, but of course you're left and all the things that I've tried, and it's been a long time since I've tried brake cleaner, so I can't really speak for brake cleaner, but as far as oven cleaners and bleaches and all that, yeah, it'll strip the chrome, but it won't remove that undercoating that's sprayed on all these chrome parts to make them real smooth. And I'll, I'll, let me try to show what I'm talking about here. Um, if you look at this part, it's been stripped of chrome in the bleach, but you have this yellowish, you have this uh, lacquer, it's, it's, it's a thin lacquer that they spray on the parts to make them really smooth where the chrome will be really smooth. The problem is this lacquer that they spray or dip the parts in, I'm not sure which one, what they do, but um, uh, it pools. It's very thin and it will pool around all the details. It'll pool around little engravings. And as you can see here, it's pooled up in here. Uh, it's all over the part. If you look on the back side of this bumper, you can see really see it. You know where it's, um, you know it's it's pooled up and it's, you know all that yellowish brown, all this stuff. This part is completely covered with that lacquer. And if you really want to strip a part good and get detail out of it, um, you want to get rid of that that undercoating. That undercoating is the key. Getting rid of that. Um, it's gonna you know once you get rid of that undercoating you're gonna have a really nice crisp part alright so after a lot of experimentation a lot of research a lot of this and a lot of that I found a product that will strip that stuff off once you've stripped the chrome and it will strip chrome to a degree as well but that's not really it's it's it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work as good as you know, putting it in bleach or using oven cleaner. But once you get your part, part to this point where you know you've pretty well stripped the chrome, you might have a little chrome left or something, bits, you know, like I've got on this one, and you're wanting to get that undercoating off of that but not affect the plastic. Um, I found a product and I'm going to call this an advanced technique because there are some precautions that you're going to have to take by doing this. Um, because you know plastics vary, chrome vary, you know undercoating varies. These things vary it's from kit to kit, from manufacturer to manufacturer. But the product you're going to need, and that works very well, is this. It's a non-acetone fingernail polish remover. You do not want this, okay? Yeah, let me turn it the right way. My camera's upside down, so I'm having a hard time here. But anyway, you don't want just regular nail polish with acetone, okay? You don't want that. It's got to be non-acetone fingernail polish remover. You can get this at any drugstore. It's going to take some soaking in that solution. And it's a very stinky solution. I'll go ahead and fill this bottle up. It's not as stinky as the acetone stuff, but it's still pretty damn stinky. So, 
you're definitely going to want something you can cover. Put your part in. Cover it up. 15 minutes will remove some, uh, but you can go up. Some of the most stubborn undercoat takes about 30 minutes. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I've am gonna, i got this off in here, and on occasion I'm just going to agitate, you know, every few minutes, five minutes or so, I might agitate the part a little bit. Usually I'll have a bunch of parts in here. I'm just doing this one part just to show you. But, you know, here's the key. Here's one thing um, that makes this an advanced technique. Um, first of all, it will soften the plastic itself the styrene it will soften it to some degree uh, it won't it won't melt it or anything like that but you don't want to be grabbing it hard with tweezers or or, or, or doing anything you know like that with it when this stuff's ready to pull out or when you want to pull it out just to kind of look at it you want to be very gentle, grab it on a section of the part that's not crucial, alright? Because uh, it will soften that plastic to some degree, but the plastic will harden back up after you take it out. And what we'll do is we'll put it in, drop, we'll take the parts out and we'll drop it in some water. This has soap water on it, but water, soap water, is, this just happens to be a bottle I use to clean my brushes in. But just, where I'm going to take the part out. When I feel it's ready, and it's been, you can you can tell when you take it out, all that stuff is crinkled. You're gonna drop it in your water and wash it off good. Take the part out, put it on some paper towels or whatever, and let it dry. Okay, and once it's dry, we'll go from there, and I'll show you. So just uh, by the magic of uh, filming here, uh, we're gonna let. 15, 20, 30 minutes, or whatever it takes, pass, and I'll come right back. <clears throat> All right, it's been 15 minutes. I'm gonna check this part. Like I said, this is an advanced technique. This ain't. You don't want to just throw your part here and go to work or something. You don't want to do that because it will melt your part over time. And another thing, like I said, I'm grabbing the part. As you can see with my tweezers, I'm just grabbing one of the pins on the inside of the bumper. I'm going to take a look, and what you're looking for, let me see if I can get the light right here. What you're looking for is that crinkly, the crinkling of that undercoat. I don't know if it's going to show that. Let me pull this away. But do you see the crinkling of that undercoat? Okay, what you... What you don't want to do, you don't want to grab, you don't want to start, you know, hitting it with a toothbrush or a napkin or, or doing something like that. What you want to do at this point is deactivate. Oh, lay this down. You want to deactivate the stuff, okay? Okay, you can, you can touch it a little bit, but just be real careful. Get it down with some water. This have, have has this, this does have a little soap in it, but I don't, that doesn't matter. Just plain water is fine. And we'll shake it up. In other words, you're rinsing, rinsing it off, kind of getting that acetone fingernail stuff off of there. All right. You're still going to be careful at this point. I'm going to grab the part out. Alright, I'm going to put it on a napkin. It's got a little soap foam on it, but no big deal. Alright, so what I've done essentially is I've, I've you know, I've taken it out of the, the solution here, this fingernail polish remover, which is pretty strong. Um, I dumped it off in some water. This is soap water, but it, it, any just water is fine. And then I'm just going to let the part dry. Is what I'm going to do. Let that part dry. Um, 
because what happens is it's crinkling that stuff off there but it will also it kind of softens the plastic in a microscopic way it won't take any of the detail out it won't eat the detail or anything but it softens it plastic in, in, in a mechan you know uh, in a microscopic way if you were to grab this part and squeeze it hard with something or grab it in your hand real hard you could not mash over a little detail or something you know you just don't want to you know it's not super fragile or anything like that super fragilistic <laughs> but um, you want it to dry and the part will actually harden back up and all this everything that's on there is going to turn to a crusty flaky film and then you can brush it off and everything without harming or leaving scratches in the plastic or anything so I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and then we'll go from there all right the parts dried off a little bit I'm going to take just an old toothbrush It's just flaking. It's just flaking right off. This is all the stuff's just flaking right off now. Excuse me. Get this napkin out of the way here. I mean, you can find some areas where it's a little more stubborn than others, but the key is, you know, let this let it dry. Um, if you do, if, if you start scrubbing on it, as soon as you take it out of that liquid, you will start leaving scratches in the plastic. You gotta let it dry. The plastic becomes just as hard as it always was. It's just that reaction is gone. Um, and as you can see, I mean, you can see the stuff's just, see it flaking and peeling and carrying on up in there. You're still, you're still going to get some stubborn parts, you know, where you might, let me, let me grab a, a toothpick to where you just, I mean, it's just, but it's not going to tear up your part or eat into it, you know, with, because you're scraping it with that toothpick. But as you can see, it's just, the stuff's flaking off. It's going to have little areas where it's sticking a little harder than others. And at the most, you'll have to, you know, take a toothpick and just kind of just scrape it out a little here and there. Uh, you know, when you looked earlier and you saw that chrome, that uh, that stuff off in there, you know, you'll find little spots here and there, like right there. Boom. And just knock that out. It just comes right out. So it does stick a little still, but between a toothbrush and toothpick, it just comes right off. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stress that this is an advanced technique you, 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 because you've got to you can't just throw it in this stuff here um, and and just walk away. If you leave it in there too long, the part's gonna get really soft. You know, I mean, this all sounds a lot more complicated than it really is. It works great though. It does work great. That's a good job. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful to somebody. And I'll talk to y'all later.